I'm Eli, welcome back to Ignition Tube, and today you're in what is probably the last B5S4 video on this channel. I've owned this car for about two years. I've had a lot of fun with it, but I really have not found myself driving it recently, and it feels silly to have money tied up in a car when I could have it in another project or in the house. So, uh, this is an exceptionally clean example. It's hibiscus red, it's the rarest color for B5s, and uh, my buddy Cam sold me this car. This car was my first motor pull, uh, turbo, timing belt, rear main seal, water pump. Uh, there's so much stuff that I did for the first time on this car. But as a last step, I'm probably gonna end up putting it on a car auction site unless one of you guys wants it. Uh, I wanna get it cleaned up. And I've been putting off this paint correction for two years. My buddy Jeff the Detailer was in town the other weekend. We figured out the perfect combination for pad and polish for this. I'm gonna show you guys that. And uh, we're gonna get her cleaned up and either ready for the auction site or ready for a next owner. Kind of a sad video, but oh, also we have to finalize the stage three tune. I haven't given you guys any updates on that. Now generally you'd probably do this step outside, but um, I'm not outside, it's raining outside, and all the car has on it is a little bit of dust from me polishing the other side. Basically every other panel on this car is done at this point, except for here, 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 and here, as well as the mirror. So we'll get that all done and then we'll get the coating laid down and this thing, I mean, it goes crazy in the sun, let me tell you. So, the old Harbor Freight sprayer. Just wipe it down real quick. It's a rinseless wash that's in there. The car's really not that dirty, but we'll wipe it straight lines anyway, just to make sure we don't mess anything up. I always clay when I'm washing, but obviously I didn't clay because I wasn't expecting to park the car for, I mean, it's been parked for like two and a half weeks now. Uh, ever since we got the X3. This is synthetic clay. I don't know if you guys are familiar with synthetic clay, but it's basically just a clay bar. That doesn't work quite as well as clay, but if you drop it, you can rinse it, and it technically lasts longer. So because this car isn't crazy, because this car isn't crazy contaminated, we're decontaminating. Always had a way to make it work and find another route. Always had a way to make it work and find another route. Always had a way to make it work and find another route. Here's what we're working with. You can see that there's like some really light swirling on the paint. That carries over to the door. But there's nothing super crazy here. Uh, I've been able to get away with a one step on this. I've been doing a finishing step just because I have the time, like I'm not rushing. But the, uh, the swirls come out really nice on this. All right, I'm gonna expose some of Jeff the Detailer's secrets. I'm overexposed, speaking of exposing. This is a Meguiar's microfiber pad. This is your best friend for cutting. This is a Rupes yellow pad. This is your best bet for one-stepping and for finishing out stuff if you really need to. Jeff's gonna be really mad at me for telling you guys about this. The Griot's Fast Correcting Cream. This stuff is witchcraft. Uh, it's supposed to be set for like severe paint defects, but when you use it with the yellow pad, it finishes out so nicely. And even when you use it with the microfiber pad, sometimes it leaves like some micro swirling. That's what I was dealing with on the other side that you just finish out with a yellow pad and like, I've been using Sonax Perfect Finish because that's what's in my cabinet. I'm almost out of this. That's, I mean, that, that, that's the secret. This stuff is seriously witchcraft. The fast correcting cream, I don't understand how it works as well as it does, but it does. That's Jeff's secret. Jeff passed it on to me and now I'm leaking out on the internet. So hopefully that stuff doesn't go out of stock. By the way, if you want to buy fast correcting cream or a Meguiar's pad, you, you want to buy these from the internet. Don't buy these off of Amazon. They're like twice the price. But if you want fast correcting cream, or the Meguiar's pad, I'll put Amazon links in the description. Please use those, because Amazon, I have not been leveraging the way that I should have. So if you're gonna buy fast correcting cream or a, 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 a sorry, a Meguiar's microfiber pad, hit the link in the description. Also, this is the Milwaukee Fuel Polisher. Uh, I would not recommend buying this off of Amazon. I would recommend looking for a Home Depot hack on this. If you guys don't know, when there's a free gift with purchase and you add both to your cart, uh, the price of each product goes down and you can return the other half. So I got this for uh, way cheaper than what it actually sells for because I got it with a free battery and then I just returned the free battery because I already had batteries for it. I'm gonna try the one step with the fast correcting cream on this side. How many times have I done this? <laughs> I'm gonna try the one step with the fast correcting cream on this side. Uh, and if it works out well, great. And if it doesn't, then I have more yellow pads. We can finish it out with the uh, perfect finish, which I have very little left of. So hopefully it works out. Also, I know this is a no-no in detailing world, but I'm gonna go over a 
bigger section than like a two by two, uh, mostly because it's just not that swirled. So I don't need the polish to work that hard. I'm okay if it breaks down a little bit faster. Here's the issue, I washed this pad last night and it still has all this stuff in it and now I've just gotten polished all over my polished car, wonderful. And now I've gotten it all over the lawnmower. That was not very smart. Oh, it does have some like little micro holograms just on the edge of it. If I was, this would probably pass, but since it's my car, and again, I have time, which means I'll probably do my first cuts with the microfiber pad now, um, and I'll just go even less. That's the final product. There's definitely still some surface scratches, like very high level, but for the most part, I mean, look at the clarity that's there now that wasn't there before. Oh, it looks like we missed a spot there. Kind of hard to get the uh, the polisher flat over here, but we'll hit that again. But I'm really happy with that. Gian Prep, this stuff smells so good. It's the same as Car Pro Eraser. Uh, they both smell very similar, but uh, the best part of prepping a car is it actually smells nice. All right, the coating process is super simple. Comes with an applicator. You can only use the applicator once, so don't reuse it and 100% wear gloves, because this is some nasty stuff. And then it's literally as simple as just making sure you get all the edges. And then we fill in the middle. And then it's just one towel to get that initial like stuff off. And I come back with a fresh towel, and this gets rid of all like the high spots. Now that we've gotten the bulk of it off. Wow, this color is insane right now. I'm gonna have the music on, just vibe out, finish the rest of the car. Alright, we're gonna fire off a click. Elite tune from Brad, a German elite tuning. This is the sixth revision that we've had. Brad and I are really dialing in how boost hits. And also we're dialing in kind of total boost amount. Wanna hit right around 20 PSI. A little bit over, a little bit under is fine. So we're just gonna choose flash file. And I have V6 on my desktop. Open. Full right flash, okay. And then we're just gonna let it rip. Let's talk about it. First of all, big shout out to Brad, German Elite Tuning. Um, every revision that I've had on this car has just gotten better and better. All right, why am I thinking about selling this car? I really, like, I'm gonna sell this car. It, it's gonna be sold in the next, like, month or two. That's just the reality of it. Um, why am I doing that? Well. Uh, B5 S4 has always been on my bucket list, uh, and it actually has been really enjoyable uh, to own this car, but I mean, I was daily in it for, mm, call it eight months, nine months, and it was great. Uh, and then I took it apart, and then I put it back together, and then I built the all-road, and candidly, between the all-road and this, if I have the keys to both, I'm driving the all-road every time. 
I just think the all road's more fun, it's more engaging. I like that it's newer, I feel safer in it. Maybe that's me getting old, but um, I don't know. I just, I find myself choosing the all road. It's not that I don't like the car. doing it for me like it used to which is kind of sad um, but at the end of the day it's it's a car I've owned it I've had my fun it was my first engine pull like I said this this car is a lot of firsts for me um, and it always hold that but it doesn't mean that I have to keep the car so uh, I don't really feel like I have to justify myself on this one I feel like just based off of saying that you guys will understand um, but I'd like to free up some cash I have some cash tied up in this car um, I'd like to have that to either put into another project or put into something else. Like I said, the house or something like that. The downside to letting this car go, and a lot of you have reached out saying the same thing, is uh, I'll, I'll never find another one like this. Uh, this one was local. It was 20 minutes away at my buddy Cam's garage. It uh, It's clean. It's treated me well. I haven't had any failures. Like nothing's left me stranded roadside in this car. Um, it's been great and I like, you know, it's always, they always say, once you sell it, you're gonna miss it. My buddy Sam did the same thing. He sold his Cactus B5A4, and now he's like, man, I wish I had that car back. But I think I've, I think I've come to terms and found peace with the idea that I'm gonna sell this car and I will not do another B5. Like, this was my B5 experience. It's been great. It's time for the B5 experience to be over, and we're on to the next thing. So, uh, I've met a lot of great people, most namely Brad. I've really enjoyed working with German Elite Tuning and Brad uh, the entire time that I've had this car. I think he's, uh, obviously he's a cool guy because if you guys didn't know, Brad watches YouTube. He's a big YouTube guy. Uh, he's watched the channel. We've been messaging for years. Uh, so it's been really cool to finally uh, get to work together on this one. Um, and I mean, just in general, I've, I've enjoyed the car. I've enjoyed my time with it. I get a lot of compliments on it everywhere I go. People love this car. Um, I think it's the red, the, the hibiscus red that they don't see as often. Um, it's just, it is a great car. And I, like I said, I've really enjoyed it, but I think my, my time as a B5 owner is coming to a close. It's either that or I like go full send on this car and I really don't feel like putting that kind of money into a B5, if that's fair to say, you know? Like there's other cars that I'd rather put money into. So uh, I will probably be posting this on cars and bids unless someone hits me with an offer. I mean, I dreamt about B5s for 10 years before I bought it and now here I am just letting it go but and it's not like a don't meet your heroes scenario because I do like this car but I'm ready it's time so keep an eye out uh, unless one of you buys it it's going up on cars and bids I got to take some pictures and you know get some some outside shots of it but cleaned up nice cleaned up really nice I'm really happy with it uh, so thank you guys for watching go out there and spread some positivity and I will catch you guys in the next video.